<clears throat> Hi everyone. Today we'll be doing question 706 on LeetCode called Design and Hash Map. So we just want to design a hash map without using any built-in hash table libraries. So for this question, I'll be using a two-array approach. So let's get paint out and draw this out. I'll call one array the index array and one array the value array. The index array's index will keep track of the keys. So, for example, if we plugged in a key of one, that means that at index one of our index array, I'll be putting in a certain value. Then, for the actual value that goes inside, we can put in the index of the value that we want to search for in our value array. So since the value array starts at index zero, if we want to put one one to here, we'll be putting the value zero into here and then plugging in two into here. So this will just be an empty value for now. So once again, the idea behind this is the index of this, which is one, will represent the key and the value of itself, the value itself represents the index in the value array that we can search up the value for, which is going to be two, because two occurs at index zero of the value array. So let's do this one more time for another case like two, two. Um, for two, two, we're once again going to put the two, sorry, you're going to put uh, the key into index two. So because it's an index two in our index array, that represents that the key is two. And the value itself, well, it's going to be one. Why is it one? Because in the value array, we're going to be updating it. Oh, this shouldn't be a two. It should be a one. That's my bad, because the value for the first one is one. So now the value array is going to look like one and then two. Because at index one of our value array, we can find the value of two. So once again, just to summarize, the index in index, oops, array represents the key. And to find the value, the value in the index of index array represents the index in value array where the value lies. So once again, if we're searching up 2, 2, I go to index 2 of my index array, which has a value of 1, which means in my value array, um, the value exists in index 1, which is 2. So 2, 2. Cool. Let's write this out in code now. Let's use the two ideas we use. This dot index array. This dot value array. Since the index array keeps track of our keys, if the key doesn't exist inside the index array, um, it doesn't exist in the map. So we can say over here. If uh, this uh, index array of key is going to be fine, what do we do? We just return negative one because it doesn't exist. Otherwise, we're going to return um, the value, which is taken by this uh, value array. And with how do we determine which index? Once again, we use this uh, index array of the key as explained before. Cool. As for the put function, 
uh, let's write this out. So if this dot index array is undefined, if the key doesn't exist in the index array yet, we want to update it. So we can say this dot index array of the key equal to this dot value array dot length, and then push the value in. Why do we not do it the other way around? Why do we not push it first and then update this? Once again, because the first index of the value array is zero. So when we're initially pushing in this zero value into our index, we're saying that at index zero, the key one appears. But if we did the other way around, this would say at index one, the one appears, which can't happen because once again, the indexes of an array starts at index zero. Otherwise, if it already exists, we can just update it. So we can say this value array, we can just, just the index array the key equals the new value. Pretty straightforward. So if they said put two one after two two, this value here would just become one. As for the remove function, all we gotta do is update the index to be zero as opposed to the value to be zero. So we can say um, if the key exists, we'll make the value zero first. or undefined sign, and then we'll make the index array also undefined. Why do we do it in this order? Because this statement relies on there actually being the key still. So first we'll make the value undefined, and then we'll make the key itself undefined. Cool. Let's run this. Works just fine. And ooh, something happened. Hold on, let's see what happened. So next array key goes to the value array line. Push it and if it exists, update it. And define return negative one. Or else return this value array, this index array key, that's fine. That's fine. So maybe check this to make sure. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Um, we need to actually make sure the key exists. So if you just do it without the statement, it's not uh, completely sure whether this exists or not. Um, as for runtime of everything, the put function is simply all of one since we're just updating uh, the key in the correct index as well as just pushing it, which is also O1. The statement here is just also updating the value in O1 time since we're just taking an index in an array and updating it. Um, this method, once again, is better than the O of N method of actually just searching for the value inside the value array. So that's why we use two separate arrays to keep track of the key and value separately. The get function is also O1, um, since we are, once again, just searching up an index that we already have inside the value array. And finally, the remove function is still O1. We're not going through the value or index array or anything of like that, so still O1. Cool. So I would say, even though this question labels it, labels it as easy, this is in my opinion, a pretty difficult question to understand conceptually. Uh, one question that's actually pretty similar to this is uh, design a data structure that does insert, delete, and get random in O of one time, because it also implements a two array approach and kind of the same idea as the put function here. Uh, but with that, I'll put a link to this question as well as my GitHub for this down below, and I'll see you guys next time.